Hi, this is another Spark Spotlight video, and in this video we're going to be covering calculations, how to see the data behind these numbers, and, uh, and also the data behind your charts, and lastly, how we calculate the trend results in your bar charts and line charts versus scatter plots, because the regression works a little differently there. So, okay, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the first thing I'll show you is that anytime you want to see how we calculate something, you can actually go in and look at, we have a calculations page. So you can click here at the, uh, the gear icon at the top right and go to calculations. Now right now it takes you to our website where we have a calculations page soon. It'll take you to a page right within Spark. Um, so, but essentially you get, we uh, talk about how we calculate everything in the 1004MC, how we calculate the neighborhood numbers for uh, page one. And we also, as I'll scroll down here, you can see we talk about how we calculate regression got some formulas here and show you how we do everything and we calculate the uh, the rate of change over per month or per year or however you want to see it and you can also see in here that we reference Fannie Mae on how we're doing the 1004 MC data and also how we're doing the um, the information at the for the top of page one the low high and predominant okay so that's there if you ever want to see it let's go ahead and get back into spark and then also what you can do is anytime you're in Spark and look at the, at the 1004MC, or actually anything on this page, you can click any of the blue numbers to see the data behind the data. So if you're saying, okay, you said there's eight comparable properties that are offered for sale, show me those. So I can click here, and it shows me those eight properties, so you can go in and verify it. And if you want to see, you know, the 68, if I want to see how, how did Spark arrive at a predominant age of 34, I can just click 34, and it shows me all the properties that are involved, and it shows me their age right here. Uh, same thing with price, I can go in and do that. Also, by the way, uh, it's not really meant for this video, but you can click on predominant and change that to either average, median, or mode. By default, it's set at mode uh, because of how Fannie Mae defines predominant, but you can change that to whatever you prefer. And okay, and then the same thing with the 1004 MC. How did you get to 215,378 as the median price? I can click that, and it shows me all those properties for that time period that are closed, and it shows me their prices. So I can go in if I want to verify that the median price uh, calculation is accurate. Okay, so you get the idea there. Um, what else do I want to show you? Okay, so let's go ahead and click on median comparable sale price. And so let's say you want to actually see the data. So um, first of all, on a bar chart or line chart, I can click show data and it will show me the chart and it also shows me a table of data with all the regression information. It shows me the total, so the total uh, median price per square foot for all the data was 131.2, the total median price 196.250 and I can see per period, which in this case, we're, they're qu it's quarterly, so I can see the median price per square foot and the median price of each one. And I can also hover over any one of these bars, and it shows me, okay, this was 23 properties, resulting in a median price per square foot of 126.8. If I want to actually see those properties, I just click it, and it takes me to this screen, so I can actually see all of those properties and all the associated data. Okay, let's go ahead and hit go back. On a scatter plot, the way it works is you click any one of the dots, and it shows you all the properties, um, that are involved in that feature that you're analyzing, and it shows you, it highlights in green the dot that you clicked on, so you can see it. And it also will automatically scroll so that dot is visible. If you're dealing with a lot of data, sometimes that's a pain, but it'll automatically scroll straight to the point that you clicked on. Okay, so that's essentially that. Now, the other thing I wanted to get into is um, how we're calculating these regression results. So, obviously, it's based on simple regression. It tells you on every single one of these cards. Uh, but the difference is, now let's go ahead and make these so that they're, the, they're analyzing the same data, but one will be a scatter plot, one will be a bar chart. So we're doing 12 months. Let's go ahead and change this to 12 months. So now you can see that analyzing 12 months of data by quarter versus analyzing 12 months of data in a scatter plot, it gives me different results for how much things are going up. And so I understand that might be confusing and it might look like Spark is doing something wrong, but essentially what's going on here is in the scatter plot, Spark is analyzing using simple regression all every single one of these data points. So for example, this is comprised of 68 data points, as this is 68. You can see the numbers right here, by the way. But so it's analyzing every single one of those 68 data points or those 68 sales to get to this result of things are going up at 0.2% per month. 
Over here, however, what it's doing is everything is grouped into quarters because that's how you chose to analyze it. We're just going to say that's how you chose. You chose 12 months by quarter. So everything is grouped. And you can see, so this group is 16 properties, and the median price per square foot is $141. That's essentially these 16 dots that comprise this quarter here, um, and the 16 blue dots, I should say. And it's, but it's grouping those all into one bar. And the same thing here and here and here. And so what's happening is the regression is being run on these bars of data instead of every individual data point. So, uh, because when you, if we were to show you a trend line and a tr on the actual data points rather than the bars, a lot of times that looks really funky and it looks like something's wrong. So what you get here is you get an analysis on the bars here. So, versus the actual data points. My preference and what I believe to be most accurate is the scatter plot. I understand that it's not as pretty and sometimes to tell a, a story to a reader really quickly with one bar chart, sometimes it's easier to do in a bar chart. Um, it, you could even do this, go to monthly. Sometimes it's a little easier to see a picture of what's going on in a bar chart rather than a scatter plot. However, the scatter plot, in my opinion, results in the most accurate trend analysis. So this is what I put in my report. I understand there's a lot of you that prefer bar charts, but I believe here is where you get the most accurate results because things are not grouped. Um, you're getting an, a trend result based on the actual raw data versus grouped data. Here the data is pre-grouped, and you can see why. So here we got 12 properties, three properties. Here we've got three properties, five, six, and you get the idea, 12. So they're grouped, but each group is, is not really the same because some have 12 pieces of property sitting inside of them, 12 points of data. Some only have three. And so it's running regression on these data points, but it's not taking into account, um, when you run simple regression on this, it doesn't take into account that some of these have 12 points of data, some have three. Whereas over here, it's taking into account all of the data and however it's spaced over time. So you might have five sales in one month, 12 in another, 20 in another, and that's all taken into account in a scatter plot, but it's not in a bar chart. So, okay, I know I got long on this. I just wanted to make sure and explain this to everybody so you get the idea of how this all works. Um, uh, the whole point is here to be able to analyze the data the way you want to do it, um, and I want to make sure you understand it. So, okay, thanks everybody for watching. Bye-bye.